Time now for all things Gators, all things orange and blue. Dan Hicken and Frank Frangie. What's up, Hick? Uh, doing great, Frank. Uh, thank you, Southeast Orthopedic Specialist, SC-Ortho.com, um, for all your orthopedic needs in the Jacksonville area. Gators get a victory. They haven't won three in a row in a few years, so that's a positive. It wasn't the greatest win in the world, but it was a win. I'll tell you what I, I was impressed about. It was a packed house at the Swamp on Saturday night for Charlotte. Man, you give Gator Nation just a morsel. Give them a little tidbit of a win against Tennessee, and they they desperately want to get behind this this coach and this football team. That's for sure. I was talking to our mutual friend Tony Baselli. You know, he's in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, and and his daughter is a cheerleader at Florida. It's captain of the cheerleaders, and and he and so he and Angie, he and his wife went down to the game. He's only been once, one other time. He was seriously astounded at how crazy the crowd was for a Charlotte game. Yeah. At, Every seat full, the petty thing between the third and fourth. Uh, and here's a guy that's a big football fan, right? Right. And he said, sure. he said, he said, Frank, I, I can't believe that fan base. He said, for the Charlotte game, I said, listen, when the Gators have it going, there's no place like the swamp. Right. There's no home field advantage like that. There's no ambiance. There's not. I, and before I did Jag game, you know this thing. I did seven years of national college games. Now, I never went to Oregon. I never made Nebraska. But I saw the rest of them. I saw all the big chains, all the SEC. There's nothing like the swamp, man. There's yeah. nothing like the swamp when it's going, and it was going on Saturday night for sure. Yeah, it was nice. Now, listen, uh, uh, and shout out, you know, to Graham Mertz. I mean, this kid has performed above all of our expectations, uh, except maybe Shane Matthews, our friend, who kind of right, pegged him right. as being a, a, a pretty good quarterback. But his completion percentage – He's not trying to do too much. He's not turning the ball over. He's taking some shots. He's making the right reads. I, I think he's been very, very good for this for this particular Florida football team. But he's got a big test coming up on Saturday. Yeah, he does. And I, th- I echo everything you said. Graham Burst has been terrific. Mm-hmm. Two things about the Charlotte game. Number one, it 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 not that Charlotte's very good on offense because they're not, but it emphasized what we've known. Florida's legit on defense. Florida, yeah. this is a defensive old man. This is no matter. I mean, if Florida was good on offense, they'd be one of they'd be a top ten, top twelve team. The the question is offense, but to the defense for a second, they yeah. are physical. Cam Jackson and Caleb Banks and McClellan and Dez, those four guys that alternated those two tackle spots. Prince Lee has come onto his own. Uh, Tyreek Staff has breathed some energy into them, and I think the two linebackers, the two starting linebackers, Shamar James and Scooby Williams, are as good a pair as they've had in there in a long time. So they're legit on defense. This is a the good luck scoring on that defense. I mean, even the good teams. I mean, the Georgias, the LSUs, and the FSUs, they have better teams in Florida. They might all beat Florida, but they're going to have a hard time with that defense. So so the defense is legit. It looks like Trey Smack is going to be fine as a kicker. It looks like they found that. Mm-hmm. The question comes back to the offense. Dan. Yeah. I just I, – I, I, I question Billy Napier as a play caller. I think it's just predictable. It's slow again. Tennessee looks like they had a little tempo, but it's back to pistol or shotgun, a lot of shifts in motion, play clock running down, a lot of clapping, uh, and nothing really magical happens with the offense. Uh, I, uh, I'm very concerned about I don't I don't want to dismiss a win. A win's a win, and they're 3-1, and one and they're ranked 22nd, and that's great. But I worry about the Florida offense. I just don't know that he's the right guy to build an offensive uh, machine. At least that's my take at this point. Well, and, and I'll tell you, some good though from the offense is is the true fr- uh, the Andy Jean kid. Yeah, uh, got two touches at fifty plus yards. You get three back at some point. You have him out there with uh, with Andy, and you have uh, Pierce Saul. Who, by the way, uh, Franz, you've watched a lot of Gator football. I, I can't. I, I'm not saying more important catch. Obviously, there's been a lot more important catches. But have you ever seen a more athletic acrobatic catch than what we saw Saturday night by Ricky Pearsall by a Florida football amazing. player. I asked Chris Doring about that. He, I, I, I can't think of one. The closest to it for me, and I'm an old guy, Dan. Yeah. The closest to it for me was Wes Chandler had one of those against okay. Georgia. I mean, years James ago. Jones had a big catch yeah, falling right, back and right. beat Miami. And that this was, was big. And, yeah. But, boy, I can't, I can't think of one that, boy, that was one. That was, that's to me, the best catch I've ever seen by a Florida Gator. One for the ages. Yeah. It really was. He's a really good player. He's a slot guy. Mm-hmm. I think the personnel's okay. The line isn't great, but it's getting better. Yeah. The two backs are very good, although I'd rather Trevor Etienne have more than eight carries. But you yeah. got two really good players, and 
My guess is Montreal wasn't happy the week before he didn't get as many. So <laughs> yeah. you got to keep them all happy. I, I, Here's something I don't really understand about the that. running back. So Frank, like if, like if I'm a football coach, like if I'm a running back and I know I can play in the league, I don't need right. the ball. I'll save those yeah. bullets. If I'm Good a, point. but if I'm a Good coach point. and I can yeah. tell that Damian Pierce is the best guy or that ETN's right. the best guy, I'm going to ride that guy. It, that, it, but Absolutely. if I'm the player, I'm like, yeah, that's fine. I'll just, I'll just carry 20 times a game when I get to the league and make the money. What I sensed with this, and I don't know this, there's no right. insight here, just opinion. I sensed he was keeping Montreal happy. I, I'm guessing Montreal felt like the forgotten guy after Trevor went for a buck 75 against Tennessee. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and I understand there is some keep everybody happy. That's part of running a locker room. I, and I don't know that, by the way. That's just a guess. But nonetheless, uh, I, I think the personnel is okay. I just don't, you know, good on innovative offense doesn't mean you run the trick play every 12th play. Trick plays aren't part of innovative offense. Innovative offense is you attack in such a way that this pattern comes when you expected that pattern. The run comes when you expected the pass. It's happening so fast that the defense is on its heels. And the whole time Billy's been here, and it's only 15 games or whatever it is, mm-hmm. but I don't sense that that's I don't sense that that's in play. I, I don't sense it's a 17 game. I don't sense that they're that they're 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 flustering anybody with their play calling. And I just yeah. and I hope he's okay. I hope he gets better. But they don't. They got to throw it down the field some. Uh, I think they've got the weapons. I think Mertz can do it. So, so that's my concern. I mean, they scored, look, they scored one touchdown against Charlotte. I mean, the, yeah. Georgia State threw for 466 yards against them and scored 41 points. And the Gators, in a home game on a beautiful night with everybody healthy for the most part, they lost. They were down to the line. They scored one touchdown. That mm-hmm. that is. I, I'm disingenuous if I didn't say that's a concern. And again, I don't sure. want to dismiss a, a, a win's a win, man. We're, we're this, the, Vegas had this team at five wins, so any, you get to three this early, that's pretty good, all right? But I, when I, uh, I just when hope I start looking ahead, offense, Frank, which takes us to look at them. When yeah. I start looking ahead, I, 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 so I have these four games in my head. I've got, I've got Kentucky, I've got South Carolina, I've got Missouri, and I've got Arkansas. Okay. Okay. Right. What? Give me a record. Kentucky. South uh, Carolina, like Missouri, okay. and Arkansas. What do you want realistically out of those four? Three and one. Three and three one. one. Well, they get one. three and that, one, they're going to have I sh- a – I should want four. Yeah. Yeah. Well, oh, sh- you should. I, sh- I should want four and The oh. Gators standard will but, be, oh, you win all yeah, those games. Yeah. But it's Here's not realistic. I I, yeah. I think they're going to beat Missouri and Arkansas. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't like them against Kentucky. Boy, this Missouri week. out there when they're so decent I, is tough, man. <laughs> for this I know, team. I know, but, but but maybe I'm wrong. I watched the Kansas State game. I think they're going to beat us. Okay. Arkansas is a home game. Okay. Um, uh, you're talking about three. I mean, three of the four games you talked about are road games. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I think they're going. I think I think I think they're going to beat. But I think they're going to beat. That's my thing. I think they're going to beat Missouri up there. I think they're going to beat Arkansas in that the all black uniform game. Um, Better chance I, to I, beat I Kentucky or South Carolina. <laughs> I think uh, uh, last year, uh, I think they, you get in people's heads that way a little bit. I think South Carolina knows they get they a they normally get rolled by Florida. B they really got rolled by them last year. Yeah. I think they go up there. But uh, Kentucky's the game that concerns me. So would you take three and one right now? In the, in, in, yes. Because you, if you're three and one right now, then you're if you're three and one, you, I, you're beating Vandy. That's four. Right. I'm seven, and and right, right. I think listen, yeah. FSU will be favored over the Florida Gators, but. You mentioned their defense. I think they're de- I think in the swamp, depending on game yes. time, yes. Yes. I think Florida can play with FSU. I do too. I, I, I took this tonight, but I do too. And, and look, the one, one thing about college football now more than ever, the team you run out there on Thanksgiving weekend is way different than the team you run sure. out there. Everybody's like that. The kids get older and younger kids are playing more than ever and younger kids develop. And so, and Florida State's not going to get a lot. Florida State's good. They're mm-hmm. not going to get a lot better because this is who they are. They're a bunch of twenty-three-year-old guys. Yeah, Florida is going to get better than they are now because they're playing a lot of young people. Good so, point. so Florida State is really good, but that, that's who they are. Florida is going to grow, I think. So, but but the, but I worry about how do you feel about this week's game? I worry about this week. Mark Stick's a really good defensive coordinator. Mm-hmm. Uh, Anthony Richardson was fourteen of thirty-five against him last Oof. year. Now, now again, AR is a wholly different player than Graham Mertz. But but he really flustered Florida offensively. He, he's he's one of the best defensive coaches in the country, I think. Um, that game worries me. I think that's a tough out for Florida. Well, we've lost back to back against Kentucky. Uh, they're going for their third straight win over Florida. 
Uh, obviously, Florida used to dominate the series 30 plus wins in a row, I think. Basically, from what was it, Frank? 87 to yeah. 17, I think Florida won that game, right. which That's is really right. astounding. I mean, could, and they had some great wins along the along the row uh, there. Um, I think it's a tough, low scoring, tight game. I'm not sure this team is ready to go on the road and win a game like that. Right. I, I, I think they can win it. I think they'll be in it. I think they'll play better than they did against Utah. I think they'll have a chance, um, but I'm not sure Florida's ready. And this, you know, again, these are hard things for old Gators who are used to the Correct. 90s Gators and the Urban Meyer Gators. But, and so, you know, but it's a, it's another big game for them because if, if Napier can win this game, you know, again, my biggest thing with Napier is I want to see that second year coaching take off. You know, I want to see them better. I want them, I don't want them to be six and seven. I want them to be eight and four or eight, you know, eight and five. So this is a, this is a good one to try and go get. I can tell you this. Mm -hmm. I, well, first of all, to that point. Yeah. Uh, Kentucky, Kentucky has gone from five or six win you to eight or nine win you. Mm -hmm. And teams, teams that expect to win eight or nine wins are very confident at home against a team that's not been great. So I Correct. think, that, again, I think there's a hard game this week. But back to your point about Nathan, listen. I've lost no confidence that Billy Napier is the right guy. Mm -hmm. I, it's clear he, we asked it this last week, it's clear he can identify players. It's clear he can get those players to campus. It's clear he can develop those players. And he can, and he built a really good, tough, strong, fast athletic defense in one year from a defense that was terrible a year ago. So, so I, I, I'm confident in him. I worry about offense. I, it's gotten to the point now where I think he's gotten stubborn a little bit. He's an offensive guy. Mm -hmm. when, when you're an offensive guy, you believe you're on your system and you calling your system is the best thing for the team. I'm not sure I believe that. I think there's some people in the in, in the periphery that don't believe it. So now you've got the conflict. The coach thinks he's the best guy to run the offense. Mm -hmm. Some people watching think, hey, coach, we love you there. We love what you're building. But maybe you should bring in somebody else. And that conflict is now happening. It's not happened publicly, but we all know that on the message boards and social media, we still have message boards, but on social media and in the and in the fan base on talk radio, even even the national analysts, there's some concern about whether or not he should be running his own offense because it doesn't look very dynamic. Yeah. He obviously believes he should be. And I think that's that's where they're gonna start. And I'm not sure I'm not confident in his offensive skills. I'm confident in everything else Billy Napier does. And it'll be interesting to watch that part of it, those chapters of the book play out this year, Dan. And I think that's why I'm not confident when they play Kentucky. I don't think they'll do enough offensively against Mark Stoop, who's a really good defensive coach. Well, if he wins, all the Charlotte is in the rearview mirror and talk a 10 men on the field twice for right. a special right. teams plays. And like you said, when talking about the offense, all that stuff goes out the window if he can go up there and oh, put yeah. together a, a victory against a Kentucky team. So that's, you know, that's the, that's the thing. And, and, you know, maybe, Maybe there's some mind games going on here. They didn't play well, so you'll certainly have their attention. You guys think you you guys think you're going to go up on the road in the SEC and win a game when you play like this against Charlotte? Yeah. Are you at home with ninety thousand people screaming? Are you kidding me? So certainly, I would assume he has their attention this week. So I, I'll I, say, I think yeah, that could be. A I agree. Yeah, yeah, and, and I think and I think he's good at that. Mm -hmm. Look, they were a little flat a couple times, and that's yeah. just kids being kids. I think I think they trust him. Uh, do, do they do they find him a little preachy from time to time? Probably because he's he's so into accountability yeah. and owning it, and he's so they're the right. But that's that's what I want my kid playing for, you know. So sure. so he's, he's about all the right stuff. But he, I'm guessing guys that are that into all that probably do it a little they're a little over the top sometimes. That's okay. But I think he's got their attention. I think they trust him. I think they like him. I think they like their staff. I don't worry about that. I just worry: do they do enough? Or is he a good enough offensive coach? And do they have a good enough offensive plan to go beat a damn good defensive team, a team that's become pretty good? And I'm worried that they're not. Let me and, say this. And though. look, is, is st strategically speaking, when you watch this Florida offense, you got to do one thing: take away the run. Yeah. And if you take right. away the that's run, right. you're that's probably right. going to have it's it's going to be hard for Florida to to find points. And that's the, that's what I'm sure Kentucky yeah. is going to try to do. Now, Florida surprised us against Tennessee in the trenches, and they're going to have to do that again. They're getting their guys back. I think when we're taping yeah. this, we're talking about yeah. Kingsley playing and yeah. George is back and the Makuza kid, if I say his name right, is back. Yeah. Um, so there's some, some good things happening there, but, uh, and I do think 
with Napier's offense, clearly he'll benefit when he has a quarterback who can run. That's one thing that this 15 can't do <laughs> that the I, last I two 15s could. So, yeah, uh, I agree. Uh, yeah. So if you get that, then I think that will help. But yeah, uh, in the end, do I think he needs an OC? Sure, I do. Of course I do. Yeah. yeah. And Guacan coming back is really big. Yeah. Because he, he really, all that stuff about identifying the defense, line yeah. calls. Uh, he's he's a good center, man. He's an NFL center, so yeah. so that'll help. Um, back to something you said a minute ago. Mm-hmm. If they win this game, if they yeah. find a way to go up there and beat – and look, they're ranked Kentucky's not. I mean, so yeah. it's not like out of the question. If they go up there and win this game, they're going to beat Vanderbilt. So now all of a sudden, you look up, you're 5-1. and one, By then, you're probably ranked 14th. You know, uh, you go to South Carolina, ranked 14th or 16th or whatever you are. Then all of a sudden – the mindset changes. You have yeah. a little bit of that confidence and that yeah. swagger. The other guy's a little more nervous when they see you coming. So you, this is a big game for you. If, if he wins this game, that narrative starts – it turned a little with Tennessee without a question, okay? Mm-hmm. And they stumbled around a little bit last week. If you win this game on the road, on ESPN, mm-hmm. with everybody – I mean, it's the ESPN game. So they're going straight from game day, wherever they are, right to the game, okay? If you win this game – at noon with everybody watching against a team that everybody knows is tough nose and good defensively. Well, now you've got people's attention. This is a narrative changer, Dan. That's how it, it's hard to believe a game against Kentucky of all days. It's in basketball. You know, mm-hmm. it's hard to believe beating Kentucky in football is a narrative changer, but it is. And so that this is a very significant game for Billy Napier. I agree. And and it'll be broadcast on ESPN. Jesse James Palmer will be yes. the analyst and uh, uh, my favorite, Joe Tessator will give yes. us the exact breakdown as we welcome you to Lexington and perhaps the biggest game in Billy Napier's tenure. Very good. That's a good Joe Tess. He that, enunciates you know, every single syllable, Frank. I know you don't like to criticize play-by-play guys, but I enjoy Tess and the drama he will build. Well, that is perfect. That, that, by the way, that's the highlight of the podcast right there. Tip, <laughs> folks, you can just fast forward right to this. That was the highlight of it. So, uh, Dan, do you have a winner this week or no? Who's going to win? Um, it's, uh, Gator podcast. Uh, give me, yeah. uh, give me Trey Smack knocking one down from 47 at the buzzer to win a 18 yeah. 17 ball game. I hope you're right. I think it is that kind of game. <laughs> I'm fearful they're not going to win, but yeah. it is a narrative change that they do. But listen. They're headed in the right direction. By the way, I hope Trey Wilson comes back. I, I, I get know. the sense Trey Wilson. Well, he got him and Gene, week. man. Those boys can scoot yeah. now. They got some speed and, there. Those and, guys and, are terrific. And Aiden Mizell, who we haven't seen yet. Yeah. That's that's kind of my point about yeah. the offense. Yeah. You recruited Gene and Wilson and Mizell, put them on the field and throw it down the field to them. But, be you nice. know, I agree. Down, down the field. I, I, mean, I, I, I know we're going to play fake because you got to play. Every play is either a, a play fake or a, a handoff. Every play. Okay. Yeah. It, I mean, the, that my biggest frustration with it was down 78 points with 12 seconds to play and they're play faking, you know. Throw the ball down the field. But I am. Uh, big week for the game if they can find a way to win. So, um, and do you have any updates for me on any other sports? Do we have any, uh, is there a well, volleyball? Well, too hard there? fought. I mean, you know, I was, I, I was so excited about volleyball, and I still am, but we've got, we're reconfiguring with the loss, the devastating loss of our of our terrific young player. Right. So, uh, hard fought win, comeback win over Auburn, five setter, five setter against Georgia. So, uh, but two and oh in the conference, good start, and keep an eye, keep an eye on the, uh, on the volleyball team. So, uh, good stuff happening uh, with them. So that's that's the one I'm I'm watching. Okay, and a basketball practice start. I'm the basketball beat reporter. You are. The that's your... I won't say anything yet, but yeah. but I want you to know they're practicing. They're good, okay. They're, they're healthy. <laughs> Jimmy's down for a while, but uh, and I will have reports every podcast. I want okay. you to know you'll have you'll have reports and updates here yes, on the podcast. Sir. Well so done. So that. that is all things Gators, all things orange and blue. Dan Hicken and Frank Franchi. And thank you, Southeast Orthopedic Specialists, the best in the business. se orthocom Orthopedic needs in Northeast Florida. They will be there for you. Frank, you have a great week. You too, Hank. See you.